I move into uh, the glomerular region. Up until this point, uh, what we've done over and over again is given you an overview as far as laying down the foundation, and then we've built upon it. Well, with glomerular diseases, first and foremost, think about where you are. You're in the glomerulus, and there are numerous issues or factors that may then result in glomerular disease. Let's begin. Now, first and most importantly at this point is the fact that your operative word here is biopsy. So the fact that you are taking a biopsy specimen based on the symptoms of your patient. Remember, once again, remember when we did our section with urine analysis. And with urine analysis, you used information that you had derived based on the history that you got from the patient, either through a clinical vignette or from attending or whatnot. And you put all this together so that you can arrive at the proper diagnosis. Well, with the biopsy, there are a couple of important imaging studies that you'll have to conduct. You can do an H&E stain. And with this, we mean hematoxin and eosin. And with this, this then allows us to classify the type of glomerular disease. And this, for the most part, will be light microscopy. What does light microscopy mean to you? Well, as we go through the various diseases, when it's relevant and pertinent, we will then take a look at diseases in which it is best to classify them through light microscopy. Well, let's say that you don't find exactly as to what you need to, or perhaps there's further investigation that is warranted. Then you'll go into other types of uh, stains, and this includes something like immunofluorescence. This is stain number two. Upon what? Biopsy. What was the first one? Light microscopy, and we're using H&E stain. With immunofluorescence, it's a fact that, as the name implies, you're literally immune, immuno, well, you're looking for the immuno particles, and you're fluorescing them. And with this particular stain, you probably have seen, you have seen the color, that bright green type of appearance, whenever there's immunoglobulins that are being deposited in your glomerulus. Identifies proteins and such. The linear pattern is something that, well, it's part of immunofluorescence. And let's take, for example, you have uh, good pasture. From immunology, you've heard good pasture being type 2 hypersensitivity. What does that mean to you? It means it's an antibody-dependent issue, isn't it? Well, when you're antibody-dependent, what does that mean? It means that you are literally attacking your target. So, for example, another name for good pasture would be anti-glomerular basement membrane antibodies. There are no complexes here that you're forming. Is that clear? No complexes. So what are they doing? These immunoglobulins are then literally attacking the glomerular basement membrane. And so therefore, if you have these immunoglobulins attacking the basement membrane, therefore, what kind of pattern would you expect to see on immunolo, immunofluorescence? You're going to light up the glomerular basement membrane in a linear pattern. And as we walk through this, and I'll give you specifically a good pasture or anti-glomerular basement membrane disease, you will see this pattern under immunofluorescence. Now, if that is attacking the glomerular basement membrane, what if you actually had immune complexes? For example, we have type 3 hypersensitivity that may occur with SLE. We have type 3 type hypersensitivity in which, what does that mean even? From immunology, once again, it means antigen-antibody complexes. You see the difference. In good pasture, discussion above, what was it? A type 2 upper sensitivity. What does that mean? You're attacking the glomerular basement membrane. In type 3, you have immunofluorescence here that is then recognizing the immune complexes of antigen-antibody that is depositing where? Either under the side of the epithelium. When you say epithelium, you tell me. What side of the, the glomerular basement membrane are you on if I say epithelium? Good. You're inside. Whereas, if I say subendothelial, between the basement membrane and the endothelium, that is the side of the blood. Is that clear? Now, when you have such complexes that can be deposited either underneath the endothelial cell or maybe perhaps under the epithelial cell, what have you formed? Immune complexes. What can hypersensitivity? Type 3 cannot be detected by electron microscopy. And if it cannot, so therefore, what do you do? You do an immunofluorescence in which you find a pattern known as a granular. A granular. So the granular would then be a lumpy bumpy. Quote, unquote. All this means is immune complex deposition. If by chance you cannot find certain things under electron microscopy, such as your linear pattern, 
then you have to use your immunofluorescence to find that linear pattern. But let's say that you have electron microscopy for the granular pattern. It recognizes those immune complexes, perhaps, and you want further confirmation. Then upon immunofluorescence, it is then called your lumpy bumpy. Three major patterns of imaging that are important based on the type of pathology that you'll get. And as we go through both nephritic and nephrotic, I'll be asking you these questions such as, does this warrant or require LM, light microscopy, on h &E? Number two, biopsy, immunofluorescence based on protein deposition. And is it a linear pattern or a granule pattern? And then the third and final one will be electron microscopy. And we had a previous discussion where we went into great detail about electron microscopy, where we then identify the glomerular basement membrane, the epithelial side, and the endothelial side. Let us now continue.